coffee, get our teas and coffees and come get a seat. Who breaks the power? Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Invitation, holy thunder, who leads us breathless? In awe and wonder, the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down the life. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into water? Who makes the orphan, the son and daughter, the king of glory, the king above all kings? Who is the nations with truth and justice? Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross You would lay down the life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me All that you've done for me I will sing Holy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy, worthy, worthy This is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You may lay down the life That I would be to free Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. I will sing, I will sing. I will sing, I will sing. Well, good morning and welcome to church. Good morning to those of you joining us online. A very warm welcome to you. Uh, my name is John. I'm one of the clergy team here and we are going to continue in worship together. And we would love it if the children could help lead us. Uh, and if you are a young person, could you bring your adult to the front to help worship? There's shakers here that you can use and, um, and we're going to worship together to help us. There are some actions to help us use our bodies as well as our words 
And so Egwila is going to help lead us in those actions as we do so together. So do make your way to the front um, if, you're, uh, if you're little and you would like to help us. Oh, we've got some people on the stage, Egwila. Brilliant. Brilliant. All right. So, uh, Egwila, over to you and John. Built the most enormous boat They kept the birds and animals to fall The Lord was good, the Lord is strong And no one lived his life in him Moses Moses took the people to the sea Taking them away from slavery The Lord was good, the Lord was strong and most Live his life in him. We thank you, oh thank you, oh thank you. That all through history you were faithful. Thank you, oh thank you. That you are just the same when it comes to me. When it comes to me. Esther. Esther spoke and boldly to the king Although it was a very busy king The Lord was good, the Lord was strong And Esther lived a life for him Mary Mary with the people's hate and scorn For the baby Jesus to be born The Lord was good, the Lord was strong Mary lived a life for him. Oh, thank you, oh, thank you, that all through history you were faithful. Thank you, oh, thank you, that you are just the same when it comes to me. When it comes to me. Tried to take away our sin So we could get to know our God again The Lord is good The Lord is strong And we will live our lives again. Let's sing that again, Jesus Jesus died to take away our sin So we could get to know our God again The Lord is good The Lord is strong And we will live our lives for Him That all through history you were faithful Thank you, oh thank you That you are just the same We thank you, thank you, oh thank you That all through history you were faithful Thank you, oh thank you That you are just the same When it comes to me When it comes to me Time 
together and uh, as we just sung he is like light in the darkness but it's not just darkness that we remember at this time of year because it is getting darker but we also remember it's getting pretty cold all of us have our thick jackets on and so we're going to pray for all those that are experiencing the cold right now more than many so it could be people who for whom the cold is dangerous for whom that they may be quite frail or old and the cold is quite hard It may be for those who experience street homelessness, who we see on our streets in London. We're going to pray. So children, you might want to think about the time when you were last really cold. Maybe it's right now. (laughs) Or maybe it was on your way to church today. Think of that moment when you were really cold. And then we're going to pray for all those who are experiencing cold right now in a really way that's very, very difficult for them. So let's remember that. And let's pray. Lord Jesus, we pray for all those for whom the cold is challenging. We pray for all those for whom the cold can be dangerous. Pray for those who experience homelessness, for those who are struggling to put their heating on at the moment because of the cost. Those for whom uh, their, their bodies don't keep the warm in as much. Those who are frail. So Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would draw close to them. Would you provide? For those who need a home, would you provide? For those who need fuel and energy, would you provide? For those who, whose bodies need help, Lord, would you heal and strengthen? We ask, Lord, that you would draw near to people right now who, uh, for whom this is a challenging time of year. We ask this in your name. Amen. And we're going to pray together the Lord's Prayer. It will come up on the screen. And we're going to say this together with a big Amen at the end. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Brilliant. We're going to, uh, children are going to go to their groups and young people are going to go to their groups. Uh, they, we have our marquees here. For those of you, this is your, one of your first times and you've never registered your children, please register your children uh, with Egwila, who you just saw up here. Uh, she's going to be registering them as they come in. They're just to the side here. If you are in year six or above, the youth are going with Ethan and Paddy. Uh, so do go to the uh, back there. The rest of us adults, why don't we make a step forward? Just come in a bit closer so we can worship and gather together. Thank you. Great. It's going to feel very hollow here, so we're going to need some adults to fill up. Thank you. Okay, let's let's stand. The rest of us, let's stand. Let's stand. And we're going to worship together. Psalm 95 says, Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. The Lord is the great God, 
the great king above all gods in his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him the sea is his for he made it and his hands formed the dry land come to worship the creator of heaven and earth this morning we come to be in his presence
is for us to take you
declaration that we're putting him first. We're recognizing him as God and Lord over all creation, over all of the earth. Not only that, he is our salvation. So let's lift him high that chorus again. All hail King Jesus. All hail King Jesus. John has a vision of heaven and in Revelation he writes that 
he sees the angels and all the archangels and the elders worshipping, surrounding the throne of God and worshipping him. You have this picture of the elders and they are bowing down before God, casting their crowns before his throne, singing, worthy, worthy is the Lamb who is slain. These guys are the elders in heaven, yet the crown is something that signifies importance there, their value, who they are. They're casting that down before God and saying, you are worthy. You are worthy of everything that I am. And the second of the glory of God filling the temple, it comes from two kings where Solomon finishes building this temple for God so that he has a place to dwell in. And he they put sacrifices and all their burnt offerings on the altar for God and God comes down in a fire and consumes it all up and it says that the glory of the Lord filled the temple so much so that that the priests couldn't enter the temple and they bowed down and worshipped and as we sing that song I just wonder whether with the elders and with Solomon that his sacrifice what, what is our sacrifice for God this morning? What is it that we can give over to kind of almost empty ourselves to God this morning so that he would fill us up with his glory? Because we know that we are now the new temple. This building is a beautiful building, but it's not the temple anymore. We are the temple. God dwells in us. So what is it that we can give and offer to God, the one that is worthy? sacrifice of praise and it's a sacrifice Lord because because it says if nothing else it says more of you and less of us those things that I have over the course of this last week put you uh, behind I've put other things in front of that's got to stop it's a sacrifice because it says you are seated on the throne and not me So, Lord, we worship you this morning. We worship you this morning. Thank 
thank you, Lord. Draw near to us as we draw near to you. Amen. Amen. Do grab a seat. Well, welcome everybody. It's good to uh, see you all today. Uh, and uh, it's lovely to worship together. For those who uh, have joined since I welcomed everyone at the beginning, my name is John. I'm the vicar here, one of the clergy team, and it's great to be with you today. And again, welcome to those of you joining us online. If this is one of your first times with us, a very, very, very warm welcome to you. And do come up and say hello um, at, uh, at the end. I'd love to kind of meet you and, um, uh, and say hello and find out a little bit. Uh, about you. Uh, but if you just uh, want to just check in with us, if you're exploring what church might look like for you, whether this is a home for you, then click the QR code and that will take you to a bunch of things that you'll need for today anyway. So any of us can click that QR code, grab your phone, scan the QR code and click I am new if that is you. If that's, and that will take you to an email. We'll be in touch with you this week uh, just to welcome you formally, but also invite you over to dinner at our place, just where you can get welcomed and hear a little bit about the story of St. Luke. So we'd love for you to connect in uh, that way. Uh, we're also going to take an opportunity to take our offering. Uh, and uh, the basket's going to come around. There's two baskets. Uh, one has envelopes in. So if you'd like to contribute to the uh, finances of the church. Everything here is uh, made possible financially because people here in this church give, uh, both here in the morning service and in the evening. And uh, so if you'd like to join us on the giving journey, then you can if you're invested in other ways. There's a second basket as well with chocolates in. Do grab one of those if you like to as a little token of our gift from us to you. Uh, just a couple of announcements for you. Christmas is coming and uh, uh, the first thing uh, coming up is our Maker's Market. It's the first time we've done anything like this, um, certainly since uh, COVID. And we're opening up our doors on um, Saturday, uh, the uh, 2nd of December here from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., where local makers, uh, people, uh, independent um, creatives come here and they sell uh, what they are making in line up for Christmas. There's also going to be wreath making and that kind of stuff. So we would, a mold wine is going to be served and all kinds of things, workshops, that kind of stuff. So if you would like to come to that, it's running all day, 11 till 4. Uh, this place is going to be packed. We've got 46 uh, vendors here, just in this space here on Saturday. Um, so we would love for you to join us um, and uh, and. Get, get some Christmas presents and support local businesses and creatives in that way because that is one of the things we want to do as a church is engage with our community, open the doors, welcome them to this space but also to support uh, independent businesses as much as we can. Uh, so there's flyers like this at the back but all you need to know is it's uh, next week uh, on Saturday. We also need help and again on the QR code, if you're around to help, serve, welcome then we would love your help as well. So just scan that QR code and, uh, and let us know that you're available. Even if it's just for an hour on Saturday, we would love your help uh, in that way. Um, second thing is that as it won't have escaped any of your notice, we have Christmas happening uh, with all the different Christmas services that are going on. There's a bunch of flyers at the back. Do grab one of those. It looked like this. Take one for your own selves and maybe to invite a friend as well. It's got every Christmas service on there. Our Christmas carol services, which will be at different times from our normal regular services, as many of you already know. Uh, but it's all on here. Grab those. But... We also want to invite our community, so we want to do a big flyer drop. We want to invite our entire parish if we can. So what we've got at the back is we've got 15 maps, there or thereabouts, and a bunch of flyers. And if on the way home you could grab a stack of flyers and deliver them, it will maybe be 10, 15 minutes, but it will save a lot of time, uh, of staff time doing that as well. And we'd love maybe just to, it might also start conversations as well locally. Repesh is coordinating all of that. So he'll be standing at the back in a bright orange jacket. You can't miss him. Um, and uh, he'll make sure that you have a map of exactly where you're delivering to uh, and, um, and a bunch of flyers so you can do it on your way. Even if it's a slightly indirect way home, it would help us out a lot. And if you can take two maps, great. Um, but that's the flyer drop. Main thing to know is that Christmas services are coming. Lots of changes uh, lined up for Christmas. So do... 
um, grab one of those so that you are at the right place at the right time. And it begins this, uh, this coming Saturday with the Makers Market. That's all from me. Why don't you turn to somebody near you and make a friend, say hello, introduce yourself, someone maybe you've not met before, and we'll be back very shortly. Sorry to start your conversations. Uh, we are continuing our series in Colossians chapter 1. And uh, hopefully you will have this off by heart by now. Um, and um, uh, we're going to get into it in depth. But we're going to read it from a slightly different version today. Just to freshen it up, pick it up a little bit. Going to read it from the English Standard Version. Um, and uh, before Max, who is a member of our church here, member of our church council, um, makes his way up to speak, I believe Abby's going to be speaking for us. So why don't we give Abby a very, very warm welcome as she makes her way up. I'll hold, shall I hold the mic for you so you can do it? Yeah, okay, all right, great. The reading from Colossians one fifth verses 15 to 20 he is the image of the invisible god the firstborn of all creation for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth visible and invisible where whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities all things were created through him and for him and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, 
that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of the cross. And you, who once were alienated and now and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he now has reconciled in his body of flesh by his death, in above reproached before him. If indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steady fast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which was has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven and of which I, Paul, became minister. Brilliant. Let's give a round of applause. I'm going to hand over uh, to Max now in our series called Invisible. Over to you. Thank, thanks, John. Thanks a lot for that, Abby. I, I came up so in the morning and said, would you please do the reading this morning? It's optional, as long as you do it. And, and she, said, she said yes, and it, great, so thank you. So the first, one of the first questions you could ask about this letter, Colossians, is why did Paul write it? Why bother to write a letter to a church in Colossae. And I was reminded by the answer to this question when a friend of mine played a trick on me. Played a trick on me. He said, Max, I I want you to repeat the same word 10 times. And then I'm going to ask you a question, and you've got to answer that question as quickly as possible. I said, okay, let's do this. So he said, repeat silk 10 times. So I was there, silk, 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 silk. What do cows drink? Milk. He's looking at me with a smile. And I was like, man, they drink water, don't they? And I realized actually by repeating something a number of times, my mind had been anchored in such a way as to displace the truth. I knew cows drank milk. And this might be an oversimplification, But I think this is what's happening here. Paul is writing to a church in a city in Colossae where he says there's a philosophy and an empty deceit that's leading Christians astray and holding their mind captive. And we don't know exactly what this philosophy is, but we do know, and Paul says this, that it's according to human tradition. It's according to the elemental spirits of the world. It's not according to Christ. And you might say, well, Colossae, old town, you know, got destroyed by two earthquakes back in the day, first century. What's that got to do with me? I would say London and the globalized world is like a Colossae on steroids. The amount of ideas and ideologies that are deeply embedded, that are broadly disseminated, that are repeated constantly, the idea that there's no single truth, you can have a thousand versions of it, and each one of them is equal. The idea that the only thing that matters are the things that you can touch, the things that you can sell, the things that you get paid in. These are the only things that matter. Don't worry about anything else. The idea that you can put a national identity above any other value system, with some Christians even calling themselves Christian nationalists. It's a contradiction. And again, the way Paul counters this deception, this captivity, is by repeating the truth that's in the gospel, the truth about God, the truth about Jesus. And I think, you know, when... When I read Colossians, I think that truth is at least as necessary now in today's world as it was then to the Colossian Christians. And he talks about a number of points, a number of points. And probably to your surprise, I'm going to touch on three of them, three of them. I'm going to touch on three points that when reaffirmed, reaffirm the core truths of the gospel. The first truth is the truth about sin truth about sin. The second truth is the truth about righteousness. And the third truth is the truth about walking in righteousness. 
So the first truth about sin. So again, verse whatever it was begins with, and you who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds. So there's a, there's a set of people who are alienated, hostile in mind, doing evil deeds. And earlier in Colossians, Paul talks about the kingdom of darkness. So these people belong to a kingdom of darkness, a dominion, a reign, a rule. And the question is, how does this kingdom come about? And the clues in Genesis, there was a command that God gave to Adam and Eve. Do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And there was a penalty for that command. If you eat of it, you will surely die. So there's a command and there's a penalty. And what did they do? They ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Then what happened? Paul talks about this in Romans. Romans, I think it's 5, 20, 23. He says, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, and so sin and death spread to all men because all sinned. There's something in that one act of disobedience where sin as a penalty for disobedience was then due to Adam and sin as a power came into the world and no one could do right before God and everybody deserved death because this, the penalty of sin is death. And everyone in this kingdom is powerless under the power of sin. Adam is the representative of this kingdom. Sin is the master of this kingdom and death reigns. And the acts of this kingdom are acts of the flesh. The Bible is very clear on those acts. Deceit, envy, murder, gossip, slander, covetousness, and it just carries on, just carries on, acts of the flesh. And the members of that kingdom are called sons of wrath. And because God's wrath and his judgment rests on, that, on the members of that kingdom now and in the future. Now we know in Romans that the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. It's happening now. And it will happen on that day when Jesus comes back to judge. In Matthew 7, on that day, many will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not do many mighty works in your name? And I will say to them, depart from me. I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Depart from me where? Previous, previous verses, the tree that does not bear good fruit, destroyed in the fire. The path on which the unrighteous are leads to destruction. The builder who builds the shaky foundation, on that day, his house is destroyed. Destruction. Now, this is a very counter-cultural teaching. Because the world will want to have you know there's no sin. There's no sin. Just do what you like. It's fine. There's no penalty that's due for sin. Death. Doesn't, even if you sin, there's no penalty. There's no judgment day. There is no day when every single person will have to give a personal account of their choices to God and be judged. That day doesn't exist. You've been watching too many Terminator films, right? There's no hell. We don't want to talk about hell, right? One of my favorite verses is uh, Deuteronomy 29, I think 12, where it talks about a person who says in their mind, I shall be safe though I walk in the stubbornness of my heart. And the amount of times I've said that to myself, I can't, I can't even tell you. But that's what the people in that dominion, they're walking in the stubbornness of their heart towards God. And Paul says, and you, who once were alienated, separated from God, and hostile in mind, enemies of God, doing evil things, those are the people in that dominion. And by the way, you're in it by default. Don't know God, don't know Jesus, you're in it, right? It's a default. It's the condition of humanity. It's what Paul says. So that's the first thing. He affirms the truth about sin. And you, 
who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds. He has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death. Why? In order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. The truth about righteousness, second thing. Who are these people? And how does this dominion come about where righteousness reigns? And Paul talks about it earlier. He says, the kingdom of his beloved son. In other parts of the Bible, it's called the kingdom of God. So the people who are holy and blameless and above reproach belong to the second kingdom, the kingdom of God. Now, how did this kingdom come about? Paul talks about this in, in Romans 3. He says, but now, Romans 3, 21, but now. It's one of the most glorious phrases in the whole Bible. Sin and death reign. Everyone's in the kingdom of darkness. There's no hope. The wrath of God rests on, that, on the members of that kingdom. The penalty of, of sin, death, is due. But now, the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God by faith. In who? In Jesus Christ. And what does this mean? He goes on to say, but there's no distinction. We know in that domain of darkness, there's no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All fall short of the standard of God by which they need to pay the penalty of sin, to remove the power of sin, to remove the guilt of sin, all fall short. In the past, in the present, in the future, everybody falls short of the glory of God. And are justified by his grace as a gift. How can this be? How can a holy and just God who requires the penalty of sin to be paid, justify the sinner, forgive sin, in order to be reconciled to him. This is, how is this possible? Paul goes on to say, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus, redemption. You don't hear that word very often. To redeem. To to grab the sinner out of the domain and the kingdom of darkness and plunge them as a new creation into the kingdom of God. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's a gift. You don't have to do anything to receive that gift. But how did this happen? How did the penalty of sin, death, which is still due, get paid through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus? Whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood. Propitiation, a sacrifice that turns the wrath of God and satisfies the penalty of sin and breaks the power of sin and removes the guilt of sin and turns the wrath of God into favor for everyone who enters that kingdom as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. The kingdom of darkness is default. If you're human, it's default. The kingdom of God is by invitation. And the invitation is to every single person. But the choice to choose to accept the invite by faith in the person and works of Jesus Christ is a personal choice that every single person exercises. So the invitation is to everybody. The invitation is accepted by choice through faith in the person and the work of Jesus Christ on the cross who died to fulfill the penalty of sin that was never discounted by God to remove the power of sin, to remove the guilt of sin so that the sinner could be made righteous before God so that God could look favorably upon the sinner. And on that day when Jesus comes back, God will say, welcome, my son or my daughter, righteous, sons and daughters of God. 
Now, there's one, one thing to say. If you've already made a declaration, if you've already received that invitation by faith, there is nothing else that needs to be done to earn your salvation, your righteousness of God, your inheritance with him, now and in the future. Nothing else. No additional work that needs to, you know, you need to do God's a bit angry, but, you know, if you do a bit of additional work, somehow it makes God favorably disposed towards you. It's done. And this is the love of God. That he didn't ask for the sinners to clean themselves up. While they were still sinners, he sent his son to pay the penalty, break the power of sin, remove the guilt of sin, remove the penalty of sin before, now, and forevermore for all those who receive this invitation by faith. So two truths so far. The truth about sin, the truth about righteousness, and the final one is the truth about walking in righteousness. Holy and blameless and above reproach before him if you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard. Now, there could be a whole sermon series on just that clause, right? But I want to make two observations. The first, the first observation is you could read the if and say to yourself, well, you know, I'm going to read it as an encouragement. If brackets, as I'm sure you will. Carry on going, right? You could read the if as a warning. If brackets, you need to make sure you do this. Now, I would encourage you to read it as an encouragement, but I would also encourage you to think about it as a warning. It's a real conditional sentence. There is a real if there. Don't gloss over it. The second observation I would make is Paul talks about continuing the faith, and there's one positive command, stable and steadfast, and one negative command, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard. The negative command. The positive, stable and steadfast, when I imagined this for myself, I thought, the disciplines that come from the walk of faith, reading scripture, regular prayer, regular meeting with other believers, serving others, working out the fruit of the Spirit, you know, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, you know, the, the, the fruits of the Spirit, nine fruits or one, actually one fruit. The working out of these things takes place through regular perseverance and some of these disciplines. And then the second one, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, it's a negative command. Don't get captivated by philosophies and empty deceit that are so prevalent. Submit to authority. Now we have a somewhat tainted view of authority because of the abuse of power, but you know, John, for example, he's got the responsibility of the spiritual authority over his church, and there's a level to which our duty is to submit to that authority in a way that is, is discerning and all the rest of it, but there is a submission at stake here to spiritual authority so that we don't get led astray. So two observations. One, don't ignore the if. Think about what it means. The second one is, think about what the outworking of this walk mean once you're free in, in Christ. So again, three truths that Paul touches on. One, the truth about sin. Once we're alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds. Second truth is about righteousness holy and blameless and above reproach before him. And the third truth is about walking in righteousness. If you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard. Now, I've probably said quite a lot, and I would encourage every single person here to reflect on some of these things and respond appropriately either today or in your own time. And I'd like to invite the band up to the stage and everybody to stand while we pray and then I'll hand it over to John to close. Father God, we thank you that you have revealed the true condition of humanity, the power of sin in the world, Lord. And we thank you, Father, that you've provided a way for that power to be broken and for us 
to be reconciled to you in your son, Jesus Christ, and the sacrifice and his death on the cross. We thank you, Lord, that in your kingdom, we can enjoy your presence now and forever. We ask, Lord, that any Christians here who are in your kingdom that are struggling with anything, that have questions, Lord, that you guide them in the way that they should go and you break any other powers over their lives that are holding them back to a full revelation of who you are as their father. In Jesus' name, amen. Faithfulness from 
promises stand true. I put my faith. I put my faith in Jesus. My anchor to the ground. My hope and firm foundation. You never let me down. I put my faith in Jesus. My anchor to the ground. take a moment to respond in prayer and I want to give uh, an opportunity Max spoke about that invitation into the kingdom of light that opportunity that invitation to say yes to Jesus and as we were singing that song I, I guess my sense was there are some of us maybe it, it, may, it may just be one person who actually you feel like right now that your life is not on that firm foundation, that it is, again, as Max spoke about directly, that Jesus spoke about those that build their, their lives upon shifting sands, just get washed away in the storm. And I just got a sense, there may be someone here, maybe for one person, that you, when you look at your life, it is like those shifting sands. It's not the rock. It's not dependable. a lot of other things but it's not that 
And so I want to give the opportunity to anybody today to put a marker in the ground and say yes to Jesus. Now this might be for the first time, but it might be a sense of no, I've, I've drifted. Yes, I'm still held in his hands, but I'm definitely not looking to the firm foundation of Jesus. So why don't we just take a moment just while our eyes are closed, all of us. And if, if there's anybody here, while we've got our eyes closed, if there's anybody here who would like to just say yes to Jesus, to say, Lord, I've been, I've been looking in the wrong places for assurance. I have never really said yes to you in a way that guarantees my salvation in you. I've hoped, but I've never said that moment. And if that's you, if that's you, just while we've all got our eyes closed, just, just if, I'd love to invite you just to raise your hand. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that our hope is in you. Our hope is in you. Lord, thank you for, for paying the price that we could not and would not pay. Thank you that the penalty for sin has been dealt with on your cross. Thank you that as we begin Christmas, the story doesn't end with a birth but instead ends on the cross and with a, a risen Jesus, with our righteousness won for us. And so, Lord, we say yes to you again. We say yes to the invitation that we have in you, that we don't have to do anything else, but instead say yes to building our lives in you. Holy Spirit, would you come? Would you come and fill each one of us afresh? You might find it helpful as others are already doing just to have your hands out to receive from the Lord today. What is it that he has for you? Is, is this just a transaction where you come here and see a few people and leave? Or has he got something for you today? I believe he does Holy Spirit would you come just going to wait thank you Lord thank you Lord There's a verse that somebody shared um, earlier, uh, one of the team who's, um, and she, she reminded us of a passage in um, the Old Testament where Elijah is in the cave and he's list, trying to listen to the voice of God and it wasn't in the fire or the earthquake or the wind, it was in the still small voice. And I just felt like um, what the Lord would want to say to us is that you guys, that we have voices around us all the time that are speaking loudly and it's easy to be distracted by those things and maybe there's someone here who's been distracted distracted from the voice of God because you're hearing lots of other stuff distracted by the world's loudness and different values and distracted by all those things and yet the Lord would say I'm here but I'm in the stillness and the quiet so I just got a sense there might be someone here who just that is for you you feel distracted it just feels like well the life is so noisy and you're not hearing the voice of the Lord if that's for you we'd love to pray for you and then equally I just felt like as Max spoke about the power of sin sin is powerful and that there are those of us who've caught up in patterns of life that actually we wish we could be different 
Maybe they're addictive patterns of things we're not proud of. Maybe there's ways in which we're relating to somebody that just feels like it's a complete cycle over and over again. It's the same over and over, that we lose our patience, we're angry, we're, we're envious of other people's seeming peace. And we look across our shoulders for that. It's almost like the Lord would say, I want to break that power. And he has broken that power, but we have to choose to accept it. I'd love anybody who's on the prayer team just to make their way forward. If you know you're one of the prayer team here, thank you. Just grab a lanyard if you can, guys. Um, That'd be great. Um, There'll be others as well. And as we worship today, um, it might be that we want to be prayed for, for any of that or more. And we're going to sing together. So why don't we uh, stand if we're not already doing so. But if you want to be prayed for today, there's a team here that will pray for you. And there's more coming as well from Kids Church to help as well. So let's worship together. And if you want to get prayer, then let's uh, pray.
Thank You. Thank You, Lord, for Your presence with us. Go with us, Lord, to be people who are, uh, are people of Your presence, sent from here to share the good news that we carry, to be temples of Your Spirit, Lord. So send us out, Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all and all those you love, now and always. Amen. Amen. If you want to get prayer, it's not too late, of course. Do come on. Uh, these guys will be staying around for a while. And Rapesh is at the back. He'll be um, not in an orange jacket. Um, he will be in an orange jacket. If you want to help us uh, deliver a few flyers uh, for Christmas this season, that'd be great. Otherwise, have a fantastic week. Maybe see you at the Makers Market on Saturday. Take care.